so I just want to go over with you guys a couple problems, um, just a couple more examples of what we went over in class. So let me get all my junk together here. Okay. Um, so first thing, look at the first example I have up here on the top left. So when you're adding or subtracting um, radicals, they have to have the same radicand. Okay, and radicand is what's underneath the radical symbol. Okay, so this has to be the same. So we can add these together because they both have the square root of three. Okay, you have eight square roots of three. I give you three more square roots of three. So all together, we have 11 square roots of three. Okay, basic. Then we get into stuff that's a little bit more involved. Okay, when you look at these, these don't have the same radicand. You have to figure out what can I do to give them the same radicand. Okay, so don't stress about making them all match. Simplify each little piece individually, and then what should happen is they should all end up with a matching radicand. Okay, so eight, I'm leaving the nine out here. Eight, I'm gonna make four times two. Okay, the reason I'm doing this is because four is a perfect square. Okay, the square root of four is two. So two can come outside, so that makes this into 18 times the square root of two. Okay, so that's the nine square root of eight becomes 18 square root of two. Then I'm subtracting the square root of 72. I need to make that into 36 times two. Okay, I did that because the square root of 36 is six. So six comes on the outside, Let me do it in this color, and then times the square root of two, and I'm subtracting it. And then the last part is the square root of 98. So if you weren't sure what 98 is divisible by, what should give you the hint is that this is the square root of two, this is the square root of two. So obviously it's gonna be something times two. So, it's actually 49 times two, okay? Which makes sense because the square root of 49 is seven. So I rewrite this as plus seven square roots of two. So now they're all common, um, they all have common, denom or common radicands. 18 square root of two minus six square root of two is 12. And then 12 plus seven is 19 square roots of two. And I'm done. Okay, and then next. What happens if it's a polynomial inside? So I can't just go through and say like, oh, well this is four times three and then take out a four. This is like um, a polynomial, you can't just randomly separate. You have to keep it together. So all I can do is see if there's something I can take out of 12 and out of, or 12x and out of 12. So I can take out a 12, and that leaves me with x plus one. 12 times x is 12 x, 12 times one is 12. Over here, I can take out a three, and that leaves me with x plus one. Okay, so I'm on the right track because they both have x plus one, but this is a 12 and this is a three. So I have to think, okay, there's nothing I can do to simplify that three, but with the 12, I can simplify 12 into four times three. So now the square root of four is two. So over here I have two times the square root of three times x plus one. And over here I have the square root of three times x plus one. Okay, so when I add these together, it's like there's an imaginary one here. So when I put it all together, two plus one is three times the square root of three times x plus one. And I'm done. Okay, fractions. When you have a fraction, we have to go back to what we talked about last week with rationalizing the denominator. The easiest way to do these is to separate them into their numerator oops, and denominator. So I have the square root of one over the square root of two minus the square root of one over the square root of eight. The square root of one is one, okay, and then here the square root of one is one, like that. Okay, the big thing is that you cannot have um, radicals in the denominator. So we have to rationalize them. 
Okay, so what's gonna happen here on the top is that I'm gonna have one times the square root of two is the square root of two. The square root of two times the square root of two is two. One times the square root of eight is the square root of eight. The square root of eight times the square root of eight is eight. Okay, so I'm really close. Okay, this is a two, this is an eight. They're not a common denominator. So to make them a common denominator, I can multiply this one by four. So now I'm gonna come down here to the second row. I have four times the square root of two over eight minus the square root of eight over eight. Okay, so we have a common denominator, but the radicand is not the same. So eight, I'm gonna write it just kind of inside. I'm gonna make four times two. Okay, and what's the square root of four? It's two. So now I have four times the square root of two over eight minus two times the square root of two over eight. So they have a common denominator. The radicand is the same. Four minus two is two square root of two over eight. Two and eight are both outside of the radicand, so I can simplify them into just the square root of two over four. Okay, and then we're done. There's a couple different ways you could have done this. Some of you guys may have simplified first, okay, and that would have been fine. Um, you end up with the same answer regardless of how you solve it. Um, I'm trying to think. What I was, let me explain that. Okay, so let's say we started off here, square root of one over square root of two minus the square root of one over the square root of eight. Okay, so we're kind of back to the beginning. So that's one over the square root of two minus one over, well then what you might have recognized is I could make this four square root of two and then the square root of four is two. Okay, so now they both have radical two I still can't have a square root in the denominator. Okay, so I end up with the square root of two times one is the square root of two over two. Minus one times the square root of two is the square root of two over square root of two times square root of two is two times two is four. Okay, so I'm really close. They have the same radicand, but they're not a common denominator. So I'm gonna multiply this one by two which is gonna give me two square root of two over four minus one square root of two over four, which is the square root of two over four. Exactly what I got up there. Okay, so exact same kind of answer, or not kind of answer, the exact same answer, just solved two different ways. And I have one more example. Okay, again, we have a bunch of different numbers, a bunch of different radicands, so we're just gonna take it piece by piece and simplify each one. So two times the square root of four times three. And I did that because the square root of four is two. So that gives me four times the square root of three. Then 27 is nine times three. Square root of nine is three. So that's three times the square root of three. And then I'm subtracting 48, I can make 16 times three. And the square root of 16 is four. So I'm gonna put that out here. So four plus three is seven. Seven minus four is three. Three square root of three. 